Hello, welcome to Board with Paint. Today we'll be painting the goblins from Hero Quest. Just like the other monsters in this series, I'll be using the slap chop technique to use contrast or speed paints over a zenithal prime and white dry brush to get these things done quickly. The minis are all primed and ready to go, so let's get started. The key to the slap chop technique is to start with a white dry brush over the entire miniature. This will help us make the most of the one coat properties of the paint we're using. In this video, I'll mostly be using speed paints from the Army Painter, but you should be able to do the same thing with Citadel contrast paints. You saw earlier I wiped off excess paint on a paper towel before going to the miniature. And here I'm giving the entire model a white dry brush. For the purposes of this video, I'll try to show you what I do on each of the sculpts of the goblins. There are four of them in total. Note that this includes the extra models that came with the Mythic tier and that I believe are now available in some of the new expansions. I did plan on cutting this part, but I decided it might be helpful for some of you that are just getting started. Sometimes you don't notice mold lines until you get paint on the model, as in this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and shave those off. What I'm using here is an X-Acto knife that has a broken blade on it, so it's actually kind of dull. And I'm just do using this to scrape off the mold lines. Obviously, the drawback to doing this after you put paint on the model is that you're also scraping off your paint. So we'll have to redo that when we're done. And here I'm just brushing the dust away before returning to the face where there's some more mold lines. And I figured while I was doing this, I'd hit some of the other models where I noticed other mold lines. After removing most of the mold lines with the knife, I then use a sanding stick like this one to smooth over the areas where I scraped. This will take care of any gouges or uneven surfaces that I created with the knife. Now doing so, we expose the bare plastic and we now have to reapply our primer. So I'm going back to just the mid-tone primer, the gray, and going over the areas where I scrape the lines off. So obviously this wiped out the white dry brush that we did. So I'll go in with my makeup brush again and reapply that. And there we go, like it never even happened. Now we'll continue, and I'm starting off with some Apothecary White from Citadel Contrast Range. And I'm applying this on all the little areas of fur that are coming out of the gloves or out of some of the boots on the minis. I know I said I was using Army Painter Speed Paints for this, which the rest of it will be. I just happen to have this white, and I like the way it goes down, so I decided to use it for this. Now we'll do the teeth using Pallid Bone, and this time we are using Army Painter Speed Paints. The alternate sculpts from the Mythic tier look like they're wearing this bone helmet, so I'm doing that entire thing in the Pallid Bone as well.
I'll be doing a variety of skin tones on these goblins. Starting off, I'm going to use Geely Dew on some of them. This is the same color I used on some of the orcs when I did the orc video. I'll put a link above here. This is probably your most basic color that's going to match the artwork as closely as possible. But I decided to get a little more creative later in the video. For this next model, I'm using Charming Chartreuse for the skin tone. And this is a more yellow color that matches sort of the goblin color from the Lord of the Rings movies. Here I'm painting the alternate sculpt using the same skin tone. as Bob Ross would say, let's have some fun. I'm gonna use Nuclear Sunrise here and make this goblin sort of orange. I really liked how this guy came out. I decided to do a few of these goblins with blue skin using royal robes. This unfortunately turned out to be my least favorite color, but I still left it because I did like the variety that it provided. For one of the alternate sculpt minis, I'm using Grim Black to do the fur that's coming out of the headpiece. For a couple of these cloaked goblins, I'm using Grim Black as well. And this will go on all of their clothes. I think it makes them look sort of like a stealthy ninja. I decided to cover all of the fabric, including the hand wraps. I'm also using this for some of the clothing on these standard goblins here. I'm using a variety of colors for the clothes across the different models. For these, I'm using Fire Drake. I applied this on three or four of the models. This is a nice reddish brown. Works really well for their clothes, I thought.
the other furry headdress, I used ruddy fur. I then also applied this on some of the clothes on the other goblins. For all the belts and straps and leg wraps, I'm using Satchel Brown. So this is everything that's leather is going to get this color. For this goblin, he has a leather wrap around one of his feet, and he also has a belt that I chose to do in leather as well. This standard goblin has the leg wraps and some straps in front that get the leather treatment. Just like the orcs in the previous video, I'm painting the bases all using wog flesh. This is going to need a couple of coats to get a nice coverage. I'm using the same metal recipe that I've used in the other enemies in HeroQuest. This is Broad Sewed Silver mixed about 50-50 with Dollar Ronnie Payne's Gray Ink. And this is going on anything metal, so all the weapons and armor. This goblin has a sort of face on one of his knees. I decided to paint this as metal, but you could just as easily have painted it to look like bone, in which case you would use something like a pallid bone or bony matter if you're using the Army Painter Speed Paints.
Now this wraps up all of the base coats. We'll now go in and fill in some details. Starting with some slaughter red that I'm thinning down with speed paint medium. I want to use this sort of as a glaze to add some redness to the noses and ears of the goblins, just like it has in the artwork. You can see here I'm wicking off excess on a paper towel, just like we do with other glazes. And then I'm just going to the tips of all the ears and the front of the nose on each goblin and brushing this on a little bit. We're just looking for a subtle effect here. It doesn't need to be too bright. I even did this on the other skin colors just to see what it would look like. On the blue skin here, it kind of had a purple tinge to it. I kind of liked how that looked though, so I left it. And for these sneaky looking goblins, I'm using this same mix to paint their tongues. There are a few gold sections on these miniatures. I've decided to use Retributor Armor from Citadel. This is not a speed paint, just regular paint. Um, and I'm applying this on the earrings and some of the other jewelry and other embellishments. Here I'm painting the necklace gold on the female goblins. I'm painting the handguard gold on the swords of these goblins. These goblins also have a golden triangle on their chest strap. They must be from Pittsburgh. I'm painting this accessory in gold. I'm not quite sure what it is. Some kind of medallion or necklace. Now we'll go in and paint the whites of the eyes with off-white on all of the goblins. I'm also using the off-white to paint these fuzzy, dangly earring things. Here we'll do the eyes of the sneaky goblins. I'm also going in with the off-white and painting these areas on the goblins' hats. These are going to become bone. 
And then on the sneaky goblins, they have some stitching on their hood that I'm painting with the white as well. And while I have this off white out, I'm going through and touching up any of the fur where we got the wrong color on it. These goblins have a couple of bony looking teeth on their belt that I'm using the white on. And by now the whites of our eyes should be dry, so I'm using my Micron pen and I'm going to do some pupils. I'm actually not sure the size of this, either half of a millimeter or a tenth of a millimeter. I'm just going in and putting a little dot in the eyes. Try to make them as even as possible. If you screw it up, just paint the whites back in when it dries and try it again. Now we'll go back to the parts that we painted off white in the last step and cover them with pallid bone. And the sneaky goblins stitching is going to get a wash of seraphim sepia. The dangly furry earrings are going to be covered in non oil. Now I'm going in with Vallejo Game Color Gunmetal and doing some highlights on all of the metal parts. I'm not really being too neat about this. I just want to give some variety to the metal. I'm mostly just focusing on the blades of the weapons and hitting all the edges and upturned surfaces with a little bit of this. I'm not really trying to go for any smooth blends here. And that does it for the goblins. For these final shots, I'll show you each group of four. This not only includes the mythic tier, but also the goblins that were included in the Keller's Keep expansion. And here are the female goblins. I 
I really like how the orange turned out on these. And then we have the group that I've been calling the Sneaky Goblins. And the final two Mythic Tier Goblins. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video or find it helpful, I'd appreciate if you go down and give it a like and subscribe to my channel so it can help me out to make more content like this. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where I post some works in progress from time to time. And please feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, and what you'd like to see me do next. Until then, happy painting.